Welcome to the Johnson County Cavalier Sports Report. I'm Morgan Lamb. Joining me today is basketball assistant coach Brandon Burgett. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to talk some Cavalier hoops with you. Yeah. <laughs> so you've started your Kansas City native. Mm -hmm. You played in college, played professionally. Walk me through how you ended up back in Kansas City and how that feels. Um, I was a basketball coach, uh, college basketball coach, where I played at a Southwest Baptist University. And then uh, further my career and went on to uh, Indian Hills Community College, uh, which is Division I Junior College, probably one of the most talked about uh, junior colleges in the nation. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, things didn't go well uh, our, our last year, uh, only losing four games. Um, came back to Kansas City and um, Johnson County was open. I'm like, you know, why not, yeah. you know, try to further uh, my college, or not college, but coaching career mm -hmm. in college and also, uh, you know, try to recruit my background and mm -hmm. get Kansas City guys to stay home, um, you know, and play for a good uh, community college. So. Uh -huh. so you play a big role in the, in the recruiting process here for the Cavaliers. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you look for in players? Um, well, first and foremost, you know, good academic players. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think um, that's a gold standard for us just because, um, the school's pretty tough, you know, it's not mm -hmm. easy. Um, and then the second thing would be mostly, um, can they play for us? Can they play for, you know, a hard, uh, well-coached staff? Mm -hmm. um, you know, what can they bring to the team to help us win? You know, obviously Coach Jeffers does a good job. Uh, he's been here for quite some time and uh, he's won a lot of games. Mm -hmm. So you want to kind of keep that tradition, and, um, you know, keep that lead each year of bringing in good players to get to the national tournament. So. Absolutely. So your first season here under Coach Jeffers, how is it coaching with him? It's, it's actually good. Uh, he has a lot of knowledge. Um, you know, he's taught me a lot since I've been here. Mm -hmm. um, just passing things down that, you know, you really didn't put in perspective. Um, you know, I've coached along with and been coached under good coaches. You know, he's he's right there. Um, mm -hmm. You know, he got his 500th win and 500 is yeah. a lot of wins to, you know, I'm glad to be a part of it. Yeah. So, you know, he does a lot of great things that, um, you know, these guys learn from and I learn from also. Yeah, so. what was that feeling like after the game, being a part of that big 500th win? Oh, uh, it, it was good. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously that time will come hopefully one day, but, yeah. you know, 500 wins is a lot of wins, you know, and to be a part of something special like that, you know, you're looking at guys at Division One level that, oh, yeah. you know, has done some of the similar things. So, um, you know, it was a special moment for him and glad, you know, I got to be a part of that win, mm -hmm. including, you know, uh, 21 others. So. Uh -huh. Absolutely. Yeah. So you mentioned how important it is to be a student athlete and a student first. What right. do you expect from your basketball players? Um, well, most and foremost, um, you know, you, you got to be a guy that can get to class on time, mm -hmm. um, you know, take care of business, be acquainted with your teachers, build relationships with them. Um, you know, you got to maintain a certain goal, GPA wise, um, be disciplined enough to study, get to study labs, um, you know, hold yourself accountable. I think that's a what we, you know, preach to our guys, holding each other accountable, you mm -hmm. know, because if you lose one guy during the year, you know, that might be the most important piece of what you started with. So, um, you know, a lot of times, you know, you, you miss something or something slips, you know, it could hurt in the long run at the end of the year. So, mm -hmm. you know, we really try to push a lot of things and make sure these guys stay disciplined. Mm -hmm. so. so your official season starts in October and it's now mid-February. How do you keep the players and even the coaching staff, everyone motivated to keep pushing and um, best. I think, you know, staying motivated uh, comes within, but it also push these guys to be the best they can be. Um, mm -hmm. We have a young team, uh, a lot of freshmen, uh, you know, only two sophomores. So uh, those freshmen had to mature quickly. And uh, it's a big transition from high school to college. So they have to really understand um, what it takes, you know, how to get things done mm -hmm. uh, um, with a timely manner, being on time. Um, and just being coachable, um, you know, when you transition from high school to different coaches, um, you kind of got to get comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, and I think these guys have done a good job of transitioning into that and learning quickly. Um, you know, first year with, you know, seven or eight freshmen to being your, your starters, mm -hmm. um, these guys have matured really well. With just two sophomores, what are your expectations of them to kind of lead the team and guide them? Um, well, we have two great sophomores with Tony and then uh, Justin. Uh, Tony has done a good job all year with leading by example. Um, you know, Tony uh, didn't play much last year, but, you know, this year, you know, he stuck the course, stayed with it. Um, he's made some good things happen during games. Mm -hmm. um, and we try to tell these guys to use them as an example because he gives us all every day, in and out. 
Um, he never complains. He just works his butt off, and, you know, he's having a great year. So, What are some strengths that you see in this year's team? Um, our really big strength is really shooting the ball. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we've been able to shoot the ball. We've, we've come out uh, on top. Um, you know, some halves we were able to shoot about, make ten threes and a half. You know, it's, <laughs> you know if you're shooting yeah. the ball that well, uh, I think that's a big key to our success is really putting the ball in the hole. Yeah. Um, you know, we have good guard play with Anthony and Nick mm-hmm. uh, to be able to find our shooters to get those guys flowing. So I think that's a big key to our team. So your team right now is ranking first in field goals, free throws, and assists. What in practice, how are you able to elevate them to that next level of leading the conference? Um, well, I think uh, the big thing is being able to share the ball. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we try to preach to these guys to play together. Um, once we, you know, games where we kind of, you know, slipped, what you call game slippage, where, you know, guys tend to um, – contribute on selfish ways, we call it, Um, you know, we have to reel them back in and, Mm -hmm. you know, play for each other, you know, uh, be successful, share the ball. Um, You know, I'll preach to these guys at the beginning of the year that, you know, your success relies on each other. So how well we do helps each other. So play for the guy next to you and, you know, whether you're on the bench or, you know, you're in the game, you know, do it for somebody next to you, do it for your teammates. Mm -hmm. Your season is just coming to an end here. What are your hopes for the next couple of weeks? Um, the next couple of weeks is basically um, just regrouping, mm-hmm. um, coming together as a team. I think uh, teams in February and March um, really have to be on all centers and click. Um, you know, March Madness begins, and your toughest teams continue to play in March mm-hmm. um, that are really together. Um, you know, when teams aren't really together, it's hard to know who's going to show up. Mm -hmm. So, you know, in March, you really have to have that team bonding. And, you know, when crucial times come to the end of the game, you got to know who's with you and who's in. So So aside from coaching here, you also opened your own basketball training facility, the Breed Ballers, and you have KU's very own Brandon Rush. Right. So tell me a little bit what inspired you to take that to the next step. Um, When I was coaching at Indian Hills, I was uh, training a lot of guys. I coached uh, 27 Division One guys that went on to high major to mid-level pl- um, play um, at the Division One level. Um, so every day I was putting in time with those guys in the gym, late nights, um, just working with them because uh, I was a player myself. So mm-hmm. just trying to help those guys gain more knowledge, um, work on their game. So when I came back to Kansas City, um, I started working out with a group of guys, uh, high school guys, and you know guys were pushing me. You need to start working out, guys. So um, Brandon called me one day and was like, hey, um, come work me out. And this is the time he was playing with Golden State. Mm-hmm. And so I went down to work him out, and I got a chance to watch uh, Clay Thompson, Harrison oh, Barnes, wow. and Steph Curry work out. And so um, I really, um, on the plane coming back home, I'm like, you know, this might be something that I can get into, uh-huh. you know, while I wasn't coaching. And so I just kind of just went with it, um, started my little old program, um, got a gym, and just started working guys out around the around the city, and it kind of, kind of grew up from there. So. Yeah. So how do you think owning the Breed Ballers translates into helping you coach here at Johnson County? Um, I'm a firm believer on, you know, playing the game and knowing the game to be able to teach it. Mm-hmm. Um, when you know the game very well, it's easy to teach um, and also watch a film on it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think uh, the big key in training is correlation to game situations. Um, you know, I do it with my guys now. Um, You want to work on things you're going to work on in the game or actually going to do. So, you know, your greatest strengths have to keep being the same thing throughout the year. Um, So I really try to push these guys on whether it's ball handling, shooting, Mm -hmm. um, footwork, angles to score. Um, I think those are the big key things that, you know, guys need to learn rather than going on their own and just saying, well, this is what I need to do. But Mm -hmm. you got to have a purpose of why you do it. So. Mm -hmm. I think that's big. And you were a point guard while you played, right? Yes. So do you feel kind of a special connection to some of the point guards? Yes, I do. Yeah. Um, you know, I've been on Anthony and Nick this whole year just because uh, being a quarterback of a team, mm-hmm. everything's on your shoulders. So uh, you have to be able to control the pace, um, get guys involved, make sure everybody's on the same page, uh, be a leader, be vocal. Um, I think those are a couple of things that I lost art because a lot of high school kids come in and they're new you know, they don't talk, mm-hmm. they're, you know, they're shy, they're not leaders. So I think trying to get them to understand that role uh, is a big thing from what I've learned as a point guard to trying to get them to do those same things. Because when they go on to, you know, their next school university, 
you know, you're a step ahead of some of those players that come in just yeah. because you've gained that knowledge. Yeah. So next season you have a lot of returning players. What are you guys going to be working really hard on this off season? Um, well, first thing is, you know, get in the weight room. Uh -huh. uh, I, don't, I don't think we um, built that camaraderie in the weight room where we're really trying to get, you know, build some strength and get stronger. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think a couple of games we got a little pushed around. So I think building strength, uh, being strong. Um, we have a lot of guards, so really want to work on guard play, playing with each other, you know, knowing where guys are going to be in spots, mm -hmm. um, and continue to shooting the ball. We do a really good job shooting the ball, um, just like you said, our field goal percentage. I think Very high. that could be, you know, higher next year just yeah. because those guys would be sophomores and they got their freshman year under their belt, so they'll, you know, they'll understand yeah. what it takes now. All right, I have five quick questions okay. just off the top of your head. All right, favorite NBA team? Uh, <laughs> Golden State. Okay. Favorite college program? Definitely KU. Awesome. Uh, what player of yours is the best to follow on Twitter and why? Team-wise, um, I have to say probably Nick. Yeah? yeah. Why is that? Uh, I don't know. His quotes are funny. Yeah. So he, he always, it's intriguing because you're always like, what is he talking about? Mm -hmm. So it keeps you thinking. Which one of your players could beat anyone else on the team in an arm wrestling match? Arm wrestling match? I'd probably say Anthony. He's the only one that works <laughs> out three times a day. So. All right. And what is your favorite movie about basketball? Favorite movie? Uh, I'd probably say He Got Game. Only just because uh, just how it happened kind of yeah. uh, puts perspective on life. So <laughs> I like that movie. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I had a thank great time having. talking to you. And I'm Appreciate excited it. to see the rest of your season. Thank you. Thank you for watching the Cavalier Sports Report. I'm Morgan Lamb, and I'll see you next time.